Okay. Um, I'm Bartosz. Um, I work for uh, Nubango. We are a development workshop with uh, agile environments. Uh, we are doing uh, extreme programming on, in development. Um, I've been working uh, in extreme programming for the last five years on um, small and big projects. Um, and one of the core practices of uh, test driven development is uh, test driven, uh, sorry, extreme programming is test driven development. Um, it's basically you write uh, your, your, for the functionality you want to implement, you write the failing test first. Um, then you implement the code and make sure that the tests are passing. And the third thing you're doing, you're cleaning your code while still ensuring that all the tests are passing, that the functionality is preserved. Um, so let's take a, a sample application that can uh, give a user uh, coordinates for a, a, zip code, a, zip, a zip code he enters. So this kind of application uh, would probably need to talk to some kind of uh, uh, geocoding service that can provide this coordinates. Uh, and uh, it can communicate to this uh, service over HTTP. Um, so if we're going to write this application using object-oriented programming, we probably want to accept, encapsulate this functionality in some kind of uh, object that, that makes this HTTP request. Um, let's call this object geocoordinator finder. And this object will have two responsibilities. It should make the request to the geocoding service, and then it should record the uh, coordinates uh, uh, returned from this uh, service. So how do we actually specify the behavior that object makes HTTP requests? Um, we could probably we we'll probably need to use some kind of HTTP library to make this request, um, but we don't know yet which library. Um, probably we need to go to internet and check the API of a specific library, check out which methods uh, would be useful, and then implement these methods. And we fail. We stop doing automatically test driven development. We already are thinking how to do implementation, what methods are we going to use, what syntax are we going to use before we wrote a failing test. So let's say that we found these methods, we are not doing uh, fully this test driven development, but it happens sometimes. Um, so we write the implementation, now we know what methods are we going to use, uh, we know the syntax, um, so we can stop these methods. We want our test to run in isolation. We don't want this to, to talk to, uh, to, uh, to connect to internet. We want to run it everywhere, uh, on a train, wherever you want. Um, so now, since we know the methods, we can, uh, we can stop these methods, and we end up with a step which looks somehow like this. Um, this test is working, but actually it's not very readable. We are stubbing a couple of MetaHTTP methods, we are stubbing uh, the response object, and this test is actually testing implementation instead of testing the behavior. Um, where when you scan this spec, you actually are focusing on the, on the MetaHTTP syntax instead of uh, focusing on the uh, responsibility of the object. But this spec is passing, we can move on to a uh, refactoring phase. So we find this cool library REST client, which has much nicer uh, syntax than NetHTTP. I find that yeah, the code would be much nicer. Let's switch to it. So we, we are switching to this library. The uh, behavior of the object is still preserved. It's still doing the same thing, fetching the coordinates from a geocoding service over TP. And we run our specs, and oops, what's going on? The behavior of the object is still preserved, but the specs are failing. So we look at the, we look at the specs, and uh, we find that actually, oh, this test is actually expecting a method on NetHTTP. 
Um, and in the second phase, it actually looks like it returns coordinates, real coordinates. Uh, oh, because the method wasn't stat, so it actually made a real request to the geocoding service. But we can, now since we know the syntax of REST client, we can fix the spec. Hopefully we didn't make any mistake when changing the spec. Uh, so the functionality is preserved. And this is the kind of problems I was experiencing in the last four projects I was working on. Um, and in the last project, uh, when, I was make, make, when my application was making HTTP requests, I decided to deal with this issue somehow. So I need a tool for stabbing somehow HTTP requests, which would not depend on a specific library uh, API. Um, so whenever I change my test, if I go library, the test is still passing because it's the same behavior. Um, I needed a library that would allow me stabbing based on uh, the methods, uh, based on the URI, body, and the headers of the request. So I can make a distinction, give different responses between for different requests. Uh, I need a library that I can verify that the certain requests were made. And I wanted a library that would allow me to work with, switch between different HTTP libraries without changing tests. So I wrote Weblog. And with Weblog, if we start again doing TDD of our geo service application, <coughs> the test will look like this. Um, we are first stabbing uh, HTTP requests uh, with this DSLA syntax without actually focusing on the specific methods we are going to use in that HTTP library. We are not thinking yet what kind of uh, API called the library I will use. Um, then we can verify expectation of a that the certain request was made. And I'm still not checking that the, uh, that they call a specific method on the library. I just want to make sure that the re request of an HTTP was done. Um, I can also specify this in a different way, uh, in the following syntax. And when I run this pack, the test is still passing. So then I actually find that there is this full HTTP client library that is supposed to be much faster uh, than NetHTTP. So I decided to, to change my code um, to, to use this library. And the behavior of the object is still preserved, so the test should be still passing. I run my, uh, I run my spec, and it's passing fine. So, what if I want to use test yet? Um, not everyone is using RSpec. Um, with test unit, you can actually use the following syntax. The stabbing is the same. The only difference is assert requested, which is more like a test unit way of, of, of writing expectations. Um, you can use WebLock with Cucumber. Um, this is the way of disabling NetConnect. This will ensure that uh, WebMob blocks all the uh, connections to the real network. And if we take this uh, R uh, this cucumber uh, story, uh, it has it has a step here uh, given via service report certain coordinates. We can implement this step in the following way. So we just stub HTTP requests to the uh, using Webmap. And it's especially important that this is library independent because usually when we write cucumber, sto uh, cucumber stories, we don't care about the uh, we don't care about the object model of the application yet. We just want to, to specify the behavior of the application. And then we'll switch to uh, to designing phase of, of, the, of the application. Um, 
So what are the other things that WebMock offers? You can match your requests based on request body and request headers. Um, so this will this will only uh, stop uh, stop requests that that match the following body and headers. And you can also uh, expect certain requests with certain body and headers. As you can see, these two have uh, have different syntax, uh, but actually WebMap will normalize them and will find them equivalent. Um, WebMap has also smart URI matching. So let's take this uh, non-escaped URI, and WebMap will actually find it equivalent to all the following URIs with scheme or without scheme, with uh, port specified, without port, escape URIs, non escapes for one of them, all the same. So you can uh, make requests with any way you want. Um, you can also match uh, URIs using regular expressions. Uh, in this, uh, in, on this slide, you, you see the code that uh, will match any request uh, with uh, example word in the URI. It supports uh, basic authentication. You just need to specify user info in the URI you are stubbing, and it will match all requests uh, with basic authentication with the credentials specified in the URI. Um, it supports dynamic responses. Um, you can specify response body as lambda that will be evaluated on the request object, but you can actually put any code you want to be evaluated at the, at the time when the request is made. So if, if the state of a, uh, of a file changed in the meantime and you want to read from the file at the time when the request is made, you can put it into the lambda. Um, currently, it supports two HTTP libraries, uh, NetHTTP and HTTP clients, but because it supports uh, NetHTTP, it also supports all the libraries that are based on uh, NetHTTP. And I'm planning to add uh, Curve support in the future. So, if you want to get more information about WebMap, Please visit the GitHub uh, website, or if you have any uh, issues or any ideas how to improve it, please write to uh, WebMock Users Group or just write me directly. Um, any questions? Yes. Okay, I have a small question and a large question. So my small, my small question is. Um, the most immediate thing I want when I look at that is that I want to be able to use RSpec matches because if I'm if I'm to make a post request, for example, I don't want to be sensitive to things like the order that my parameters have gone into. So I'd like to be able to put in a custom matcher that says, well, I've written an arbitrary RSpec matcher that makes sure that these parameters are in there somewhere and, and arbitrary logic. So I was just going to ask if you, if you support that or not. I mean, the referring to something different or... Um, well, that's an example, but I mean, more specifically, if I, if I wanted to check that the, po that the body of the post has some property, then I would want to be able to write a custom aspect matcher that I could, instead of putting a string in, I would want to put in a matcher object, which then uses the standard aspect mechanism for evaluating whether that's a match or not. Um, yeah, so all, the, uh, so all the requests that you register when you're subbing are, uh, are actually a request signature object. That you can operate it, so you can write uh, matchers against this signature object. So it, like, it's actually quite easy to add any new matchers to 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 add Great. Any other questions? Just a simple question: How does it compare to Payment? Okay. Um, yeah. So how does uh, WebMap uh, compare to Payment? So I actually. I started with fake web. I, uh, I, I wrote my code with uh, using fake web first, and uh, <coughs> I, fake web doesn't support stubbing, uh, stubbing requests based on body and headers, and this limited me in stubbing post requests, for example. Um, 
and also paper doesn't support uh, uh, doesn't support matching because and setting expectations on the request. Um, there is a, a, a fake web masher written by uh, Pat, Pat, Pat Allen. Um, and it works quite well. The, the only problem that fake web domain is based around URI. So you're stopping URI. Um, in web mock, you're stopping requests, which has body headers, methods, and URI. And uh, so fake web Matcher also has this problem that, uh, that you can also only match against your eye. And uh, the main problem I had was uh, stabbing post requests. So, so I, I tried to extend FakeWeb in the beginning, but the uh, architecture didn't allow me actually to, to extend it how I want it. And that's how I uh, uh, decided to write WebMap. But actually, if you take a look at what Mod Codis has a uh, couple of similar concepts that I took from, uh, from Python. So, we ran into trouble when we were using fake web because uh, we didn't want to stop out all of our solar searching, uh, but we didn't want to disable any net um, connections, uh, so we'd get alerted. Something that you stuff out, right? How would you deal with that in WebMod? So, you just stuff only certain requests? Well, <coughs> want to make sure that it doesn't make any external requests, but not, but still give access to a certain service such as Solar. Um, well, okay, so uh, it's actually the same uh, as in, uh, in WebMod, you can use a method called allow WebMod, allow NetConnect, that allows you to access the network. But you actually have the same method in, in fake web. Uh, uh, it, it allows you, so only the requests that are stuck will be actually, uh, will return stuck responses. Yes. But only other requests that are not stuck will make a re request. But what if I've gone to stop something else? Well, if you forgot to stop something else, you can. Uh, uh, you can turn off uh, the net connect, and this will. Uh, and if you if you run the application, it will allow you to detect all the requests that are not stopped. By it will raise the exception that, that there was a request that you didn't stop was not expected. Did you want to ask whether it allow local requests? Yeah, essentially. Um, I mean, it it sounds like a it sounds like a stupid question, but we. We've got, um, we make a lot of requests for external services and it's very easy to forget to stub them. <coughs> so you need to be alert of, alert of that straight away. But you still, there's certain services which tend to be running locally that you still need access to, um, which communicate using HTTP. So it's like if you disable the net requests, then you don't get half of it, and if you enable it, then you don't get the other half of it. So sounds like you, you almost want to be able to unstub yeah. specific, you want to do the opposite of this. Like yeah, you want to say, yeah. I'm going to stub everything except for, if it yeah. looks like this, then really do it. Yeah, pass yeah, a block exactly. instead of true or something to uh, disable things. So just uh, disable everything that matches this. Yeah. Or everything that doesn't yeah. But yeah, <laughs> basically, WebMock is based on the same idea as FakeWeb. So probably if you have a problem with FakeWeb, uh, you'll get the same problems with WebMock. Maybe not the best uh, solution for this. So when you match things to our eyes, um, uh, you said that it's uh, it's escaping and does it um, also is there any way of doing so it could match the parameters irrespective of the order that they're in which touch them? But it's a it's a real problem when you're doing this APIs. Um, yeah, so uh, WebMock actually doesn't care about the order of the of the parameters. So you can put them in their order and full match them. Um, but there is no way of specifying that they should be in a certain order. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay. Thank you.